So last time I made a video about Raractitane, it was really popular and I got loads of messages and DMs in my Instagram and on YouTube all asking like kind of questions around training and Raractitane. So I thought I would put all of the questions together and make like make a video about how I've sort of experienced Raractitane in training, my tips and tricks and all the questions that you guys had that are answered that will hopefully help you guys on your journey with Veracutane. For those of you who don't know, Veracutane is also named isotretinoin. They're both exactly the same thing, it's just that Veracutane is like a brand of isotretinoin and that's what's like mainly used when treating acne patients. This is like the actual definition on the NHS website, so isotretinoin tablets is medicine to treat acne, that's basically all it does. It shrinks your oil glands or your sebaceous glands, which is what causes acne, like overproduction of oil is what causes acne. So it shrinks those glands so that you don't have acne anymore. So I'm going to start off with some of the questions that um, were sent through to me. So first one, does isotretinoin affect your training? So like the general guideline which I've pulled up here that my doctor gave me, mild to moderate training is well tolerated. However, patients should abstain from vigorous exercise for the duration. So basically the general rule of thumb is that you can train whilst you're on isotretinoin or Accutane. However, it should be mild to moderate training. It shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be like super strenuous because your body is going through a lot and they recommend that you don't put yourself through like an extra added stress on your body. For those of you who know me and those of you who follow me on my channel, I do weightlifting and like some kind of like CrossFit sometimes and I would obviously argue and say that those are not mild forms of training and I have tried to keep that up whilst I have been on isotretinoin but as you'll see with the later questions, I haven't quite managed to keep that up just because of the effects that it's had on my body. So can you train whilst you're on isotretinoin? Absolutely, and I don't recommend that you give up everything that you're doing. Even if like you're suffering like quite a few side effects, I find the best way to move past that is to keep moving, but just kind of like adapt it a little bit when you feel like you need to, but just to try and keep moving and make sure that you're keeping your body healthy and happy. So the second question is when will it start to affect me? So I think that like I'm just talking about this like I'm not a doctor I'm talking about this purely through my own experience I didn't start to feel the side effects until I was on about 40 milligrams a day So my doctor started me on 10 milligrams a day Which is like a very very low dose and I didn't really feel much of a difference at all in my body Like whilst I was training and I didn't really have many of the side effects either on that sort of dose But as soon as I started hitting the higher doses a huge huge difference appeared and I really really did start to feel it. So I'd say it's important to bear in mind that like I am an 80 kilo woman so 10 milligrams isn't a lot relative to my body weight but it might be a lot for someone who weighs a lot less than me so obviously it would just depend on what your body is like and how your body takes to it but I would say that the first few months whilst they ease you into it isn't so bad and I would really take advantage of that time whilst you're training to make sure that you keep moving make sure that you are doing everything that you can do um, before they put you on that higher dose before it does start to like really really affect your training next question do you or will you need to adapt your training this is a really tough question for me because I've I've tried to avoid adapting my program and I've tried to like just keep pushing through what I was doing before because it's really important to me that I'm able to train and it's really important to me to stay strong and stay healthy and all of those things. However, I got to a point where the side effects of Veracutane were getting so much that I could no longer train the way that I was training before. I did in fact then have to adapt my training so what I had to do was basically just bring back the volume like quite a lot, uh, bring back the percentages and kind of just maintain like a maintenance level as opposed to like a trying to get strong level or like trying to PB or anything like that like I, that was just off the cards and it is just off the cards right now like it's just not something that I'm going to be able to do and I found that the best thing to do was to prepare myself for that mentally and just like create myself a program around being able to take some time off and being able to like put some things aside one session because I, my body can't do it and especially whenever there's an increased dose, whenever I've gone to see the dermatologist and she said we can up the dose, those following weeks, my training has to be adapted majorly because I'm not able to do what I usually do. I'm like way more tender and sore, like my joints really, really hurt. I'm like really, really tired. So I have to adapt my training. If I was gonna make any kind of recommendations for people who do train whilst on Raracutane, the best thing is to keep your program as close as possible to what you were doing before, but just take those percentages and take that volume way back down and just try to keep the clogs turning. Sadly, it's just gonna be that time where you need to realize that your focus isn't going to be on like getting really strong and PBing. Your focus is on like making sure that your body is able to handle what it's dealing 
dealing with right now, which is trying to get your skin better. And that's really the harsh truth of it. Like there isn't really a way that you're gonna be able to keep doing what you were doing before whilst your body's going through that. And that's a really hard thing to accept. And for me, it's taken a really long time. I mean, I say that I've been on it for six months, but it's taken like a good few months for me to be like, okay, I can't do what I've done before. I'm gonna have to change that and that's okay. It's okay that I'm not gonna be where I wanted to be, but I'm gonna be somewhere different with skin that makes me happy, with looking in the mirror and actually not feeling like really upset. So the next question is, does Roaccutane lower your energy levels? So in my experience, I have found significant drops in energy levels. As I said before, like when I was doing the lower doses, not so much, but since the increased dosage, I really, really do feel it. I struggle a lot throughout the day, like my energy levels are low and my concentration is next to nothing. Like I can only concentrate for about half an hour before my mind, like my eyes just don't wanna focus. Like even if I'm interested in something, I can't focus on it. So that makes it quite challenging, but yeah, my energy levels are significantly lower and I find it harder to do any kind of like physical activity because I just get drained. Next question, does Roaccutane affect your sleep? So it does hasn't, hasn't like actually affected my sleep like I still sleep really well I've always been quite like a good like a deep sleeper nothing really wakes me up and I'm like a very like once I'm asleep I'm asleep but I do sleep significantly more because I'm so tired like because it's affecting my energy levels if I get like 11 hours sleep I'll still wake up like really really tired and feel really drained and my eyes feel like I've been asleep for 20 minutes so that side of things is quite challenging because I'll sleep more but feel just as drained and I've had this conversation with my doctor and she said it's completely normal that you'll feel drained and feel tired like it's just a side effect of the medication so yeah do expect to sleep more and feel less rested it's really really tough should I still be getting spots whilst I'm on Rakuten treatment so for me um, the first two months of treatment were some of the hardest months I've ever had with acne the the way that the medication works is that it like brings everything out so it's like that classic sentence like it has to get worse before it gets better yeah those first two months were awful everything came out it was like probably the worst acne I've ever had and I was so upset with it and I thought oh my god like is this what it's gonna be like does it just take everything out and then it's just there on your face and you can't get rid of it and I can't actually pinpoint a time where I woke up and my skin was just better it's been such a gradual process that I feel like I wouldn't even be able to say where my skin did start getting better I think after the first four months that's when I didn't have any spots and I haven't had a spot on my face until literally two weeks ago where I had one that came up like just here, which I was devastated about. You're not supposed to get spots whilst you're on the medication. The medication, obviously, like I said, basically like shuts off the oil glands in your face, which is what produces spots, which is what makes you get spots like excess oil in your face. So you shouldn't be getting more spots, but if you do, it's not the end of the world. Like it is what it is. You're still gonna get spots after the treatment, hopefully just not in the like form that you had it before, like the full acne. I think if you still get like quite a few spots, you should definitely consult with your doctor because then maybe it's not working for you or you need to try alternative treatments. But I wouldn't be like super worried if you get like one spot every two months whilst you're on the medication. Like it's still working and it's still doing its thing. So trust the process. Next question, does it give you joint pain? So this is one of the questions, like a few people asked me this and a few people wrote it in the comments in my last video. Like, should you be worried about joint pain? Like, am I gonna get really, really bad joint pain? And the truth is like for me, I have, never felt like so crispy and crunchy like that's the only way that I can describe it it takes me so long to warm up because I feel stiff and tired and so dry in my joints everything feels like a bit like uh, like imagine like rubbing two pieces of dry toast together that's what it feels like so yes like, I have had quite a bad experience of joint pain and it has meant I've had to kind of like take my training back and take my training down but I have found it relatively manageable I think that you have you can find ways to work around it so i take a lot longer to warm up i take lots of different like weight jumps smaller weight jumps than i usually would next question what are the main side effects that you've had with Roaccutane or isotretinoin so the main side effects that i've kind of experienced whilst on isotretinoin is decreased energy i sleep significantly more i get really 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 dry lips i've had nosebleeds i get really like dry skin on the backs of my hands um, and i also had really dry skin on my arms as well at one point and like my general mood is quite affected. I, I'm not usually like a very teary person generally. Um, when I'm on my period, I'm very teary, but generally I'm not very teary, but Roaccutane has made me so teary and so like sensitive to everything, which makes it even more challenging, obviously, because you go into training and you think you're gonna have a good session and you have a terrible session. And for me, I've never had been so affected by that. So my mood has really, really taken a bit of a hit. But <laughs> the next question is actually, how can I limit the side effects? Now, I do have some good news. It's not all 
like dreary, sad, like pain, horrible times with loads of spots. There are ways that you can limit the side effects. There are ways that you can try and work through it. So one of the ways that I found is by doing ice baths or cold showers. Like the research behind ice baths and cold showers is very well known anyways. I've made a video about it, which you can go and watch up here. And basically it's just a way to keep your body healthy and make sure that you're getting blood to all of your areas, flushing everything out and making you feel good. That's been a really great way for me to make sure that my body still feels healthy and happy. Another way that I've kind of tried to limit the side effect is I eat so many greens, so many vegetables, and I try really, really hard to get as many micronutrients into my diet as, as possible. Like, does generally try to like make my mood better, but also I don't know whether it's a placebo, but I generally feel more confident in myself that, that I won't have a relapse if I have all of those vegetables and stuff. And then just making sure that you're eating enough so that your body isn't like in a calorie deficit losing weight whilst it's going through all of these other things. Another way to limit the side effects is to make sure that you are moving your body in a way that works for you right now. When I go through the periods where I increase my dosage, the only training I can sort of do is like a yoga flow, like rehabby bodybuilding stuff, just to try and like reinforce all of the errors as opposed to like attack them in like a really hard workout. So that's something that I've been trying to focus main a lot of my energy on. Next question, how long will you be on Rorectin? for. This is the million dollar question. I don't even know how long I'm going to be on it for. The way the dermatologist that I go and see explains it to me is that per your body weight, you can have a certain amount of grammage in your body and you want to try and reach that maximum grammage to make sure that your sebum glands are shrunk enough and that you have like the best possible effect from the medication. So for me, that's between nine and 10 milligrams. I'm at four now. So I've still got about six to go. And when you think about only taking 50 milligrams a day, so I'm looking at about nine months or 10 months, I'll be on Rakuten for. Obviously it depends a lot on different people and you won't get all the side effects like from the very start, it'll build over time. But yeah, that's kind of how long it takes for me. The final question, which I feel like is a great question to end on, how long until it gets better? <laughs> It didn't get better until about four months in. That's when I really started to notice that my skin was clearing and I started to have the confidence to just like look at myself in the mirror and be like, okay, this isn't so bad. Like there are no spots, but you have a few scars, totally fine. To be honest, it's for, it just ends up being like a lot of like a, a mind shift, like a mental shift as to like what you think you look like and what you think you can handle in your mind as to like how you look and how you feel about your skin. If I were to give any advice is that you need to like immerse yourself in this process and realize that it's going to be really, really tough but that this is the way that you need to go in order to make sure that the problem doesn't persist anymore and you can come out of it happy and make sure that like this doesn't happen to you again. So I hope that you guys did enjoy this video and did find it useful. If you have any more questions or anything, do just pop them down in the comment section below or you can send me a message on Instagram. This is my handle and I'll always be happy to help. Make sure to hit that like button if it did help as well as subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you guys in the next video. <laughs> Like, 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 wait.